Morning everybody. My name is Joe McCool. I'm an engineer and it's from that viewpoint that I want to introduce you to the Gardner engine. This is a Gardner 3LW and it's got some really very interesting engineering features about it that I wanted to show you. And in fact it typifies the whole approach by Gardner. The first thing that I should point out is that each Gardner engine was manufactured by one man, was put together by one man, and they were never mass produced. So the chaps who were building these engines took great care over um, every nut had to be perfect. That engine was associated with that man and he took great pride in his work. Okay, the engine itself really very very simple we've got a basic crankcase here which is holding the crankshaft um, we've got a very simple uh, block through which the the coolant runs to keep the engine cool and we've got very simple head here so Gardner could put together a six-cylinder engine by simply duplicating this and they could put together a five-cylinder engine by using this assembly plus another block of two cylinders um, very, very simple. There's no electronics, there's no turbochargers. All we've got is very simple um, traditional injector pump. Here we have a lift pump which sucks diesel up, fuel up from the tank, puts it up here to a very simple uh, filter system. Excess diesel from the fuel runs back down this pipe and back into the tank. The injectors are fed through these injector pipes here and if the injectors can't handle the excess diesel that they're getting from the pump on the pressure, it simply flows down through this pipe and comes back into the fuel supply again. Here we have the drive to the oil pressure pump. So oil is lifted from the sump up through this pump up to this, this um, relief valve here and the relief valve is adjustable here with a screw so oil under pressure flows through the filter and back down into the crankcase and onto the crankshaft and the journals and shells there so it's really very very simple oil that doesn't go through the filter that comes under low pressure trickles back into the injector pump to lubricate that and here back down into the crankcase and back into the sump. So it's all very simple. We refer to this as the coffee pot oil filter for obvious reasons. Now, the injector pump. Injector pump is a bit like a small engine in its own right. We have a shaft running through here with cams on it. The cams lift little pistons inside here and force the diesel up into the injectors under very high pressure. Now, what's unique to Gardner um, is these levers here. We call them latching levers. So I can, I can squirt diesel into the injectors using these levers. I can even latch a lever down so that particular injector doesn't fire at all. Now this is surprisingly useful because um, we can diagnose individual injectors using this method. We can cause the engine to only run on one cylinder by simply latching down these two. Another feature, uh, perhaps not quite so unique, is this decompression lever here. When we put it up, it forces the inlet valves on the head down. So in fact, you'll not get any compression in the, in the in the combustion chamber. Now why would you want that? Well, in the early days, whenever we didn't have the modern batteries that we have now, this enabled us to start the engine by hand. We could get a big flywheel uh, turning over, and once we had a sufficient speed, we can drop down this compression lever and off goes our engine. Not used so much now because our batteries are just so good and so reliable. There's very few people starting them by hand now. Okay, um, water pump, 
The water pump will, will suck in water from here, be it from a radiator, a heat exchanger, or perhaps even from the sea itself. It's very, very simple. It works through centrifugal action, fires the water out. The water comes up here into the block, all the way around the block and the heads, back up here along this water rail. Here we've got a, a thermostat, which can be set at 60 degrees or 74 or 80 degrees. There's a few different thermostat settings you can use. But again, it typifies Gardner. 60 degrees is quite cool. So the engine is not under stress mechanically, and it's also not under stress uh, in terms of temperature. Starter, typical CAV starter. Um, what's special about them is that whenever you energize the starter, the whole armature moves out, not just the pinion. The whole thing moves forward, engages in the flywheel here, and once it's engaged, maximum current flows and off she goes. This engine, this particular engine, doesn't have the traditional uh, air breather which are, comes on up here for the inlet. We actually had this here fabricated because it just suited uh, this particular boat that we're putting it into. In a boat, um, you want to try and use as big a propeller as you can. So the Gardner's ideal because it's low RPM. Maximum RPM on this engine is 1700. It would typically be under load at sea or wherever at maybe 1,800 to 1,000 RPM. So it can turn a big propeller slowly and that's what you want. Lots of torque to turn a big propeller. In, a, in an automotive application, in a lorry or a bus, very easy on, on fuel. You won't beat Gardner. Even the most modern engine won't beat Gardner for fuel. Okay, so before we start the engine, of course, uh, we take out our our dipstick and we check it for oil which I've already done this morning and uh, make sure we've got oil there. Now if the engine is running every day we simply get into our boat or into our lorry reverse, turn the key and she'll start. But if the engine has been sitting for some time, I mean we've had engines come into the yard here that have lain out in a field for maybe three or four years and we find that with only maybe just a, a morning's work we can get them going again. Now what's the secret to this? Again, the, these levers enable us to prime the, comp the combustion chambers with fuel. And this is unique to Gardner here. We can push up this button and the rack flies back. It's the position of that rack that determines the fuel that the injector pump and the engine is going to get. So really that determines your power output. So on cold starting, maybe in the depths of winter, you can push up this button and she gets extra fuel for starting. It's a bit like the equivalent of a choke in a petrol engine. Once we've done that, we simply open up the throttle as desired, push the button and she'll start. So let's pretend that she's sat for a couple of years or something. What would we do? We would first of all <coughs> operate the lift pump to fill the chamber, fill this, this whole top end of the, uh, the pump top with fuel. We then just simply squirt in a little bit of diesel into the combustion chambers as I described. We make sure the strangler is off. Um, make sure the strangler is off. Uh, I didn't point this out before. The excess diesel button, we push it up and the rack comes back to give her more diesel. And that's it. We push the button now and with a bit of luck she'll stop. Ready? Fingers crossed. Right, I don't want to run her very long here because A, we've no exhaust on as you've seen and there's no coolant applied or anything. So, but I think that will suffice to show you how easy they are to start. If a gardener doesn't start within five revolutions, there's something wrong. Stop, investigate, because normally they're just so easy to start. So that's all I've got for you on this particular engine. Maybe on other occasions, we will be able to take you around some of the, the bigger gardener engines. Maybe even a smaller gardener. We have a single cylinder here, which we can show you hand starting. Now that is great fun. Thank you so much for joining us.
and see you again.